Welcome to Mark Arnold's Finance. I wanted to do this video today because there was a lot of big companies that reported earnings, or shall I say important companies in the market that give an outlook on what the rest of the year might be like for a lot of stocks. And so today what I'm gonna do is cover a few stocks that are in my portfolio and a few that aren't and just give you whether they beat earnings, missed earnings, and a few important uh, takeaways from each one. And I'm gonna show you my portfolio performance here first. If you appreciate that type of transparency, because it's something that I do with every single video, be sure to subscribe and follow me along. But today was a big day. So I wanna start with looking at my portfolio performance, which has really been improving uh, massively. This whole market's been going up. Overall, earnings have been good so far this uh, today, last week, and so that's made it in my portfolio to now where I'm at a 4.36% uh, loss. Just last week, I was down almost 11%, so this has made substantial improvement. Now I'm only about $2,000 of unrealized losses in the red. Uh, you'll see companies like Cisco and Microsoft um, jump back into the green, and a lot of companies are just rising higher and higher. So let's get right into this. Uh, earnings, I'm gonna be showing you guys this chart, whether, you know, per these, these are the companies I'm covering, Microsoft, Coca-Cola, 3M, Google, and UPS. And if we go back to my portfolio, of course, Microsoft is up 3.97% for me, Coca-Cola is up 18.37%, and 3M is down almost about 20.5%. And then the other two, Google and UPS, are ones that are just important in my eyes and that will give us a little heads up for some other companies that will be reporting later this week. Let's start with Microsoft. So Microsoft was a big one to report earnings and this is my biggest holding by far in my portfolio. And while it was down in the $230 range, I added massively. Now it's back up to, I believe, over $250 per share. So we'll see here that Microsoft beat both on EPS and revenue. Their expected earnings per share was $2.30. They came in at $2.35. Their expected revenue was $49.61 billion. They came in at $50.12 billion. Now their cloud revenue did come in lower than expected. So this was the one negative with Microsoft. Of course, their Azure cloud is one that's in second place behind Amazon's cloud and so it's very important to look at this. So uh, they, they brought in revenue, their cloud side of things, of $20.33 billion, and it was expected uh, $20.36 billion, so a very slight miss. Now their Azure revenue grew 35%, where last quarter it grew 40%, so 5% lower growth in this quarter, and analysts expected more in line of a 36% growth within the 36% range. So it was down by about a percentage from um, expectations, uh, which I will say this, these numbers are still really good. Um, to have over $20 billion of revenue and your Azure cloud growing 35% in this quarter is still amazing. And you can't expect them to grow 40% plus every single quarter and so the fact that they grew to 35% versus expected 36%, to me, not a big deal. Uh, so I don't see that as a negative. I, don't, I actually see that as a good thing because this is still a very uh, fast growing part of their business. Now overall for the company, revenue grew 11% year over year. Their um, productivity and business processes segment, which is the Microsoft 365 software subscriptions and LinkedIn part of their business, um, did really well and posted 16.47 billion in revenue, up 9% and above the expectations of 16.13 billion in revenue. Uh, so this just goes to show you that their subscriptions are a huge part of this company's quality because that's reoccurring dependable revenue and it's performing as it should be and growing healthy and their other parts of their business did really well. The only thing, like I said, that kind of came in below expectations was their cloud. Uh, and that's something that wasn't a huge miss. It was a slight miss. And so I don't see anything negative with Microsoft's earnings. And I am so glad that I was able to add heavily um, over the last month or two. So Microsoft was a big thumbs up for me. This company, 
uh, rarely do they miss. Um, and so I, I expected them to be on both their EPS and revenue like they did. Great signs as a shareholder of Microsoft. And I am very long term on this company. That's why it's such a big percentage of my portfolio. Right now it makes up 14.53% of my portfolio. And I plan on eventually getting it up to a certain amount and then stopping and just carrying on. So let's move to Coca-Cola. We'll see here that they also beat on both their earnings and revenue. They expected um, had an expected earnings per share of 64 cents. They came in at 69 cents and they had an expected revenue of 10.52 billion and came in at 11.05 billion. So a solid, strong consumer staples company is what Coca-Cola is. Um, you know, I was thinking of Pepsi or Coca-Cola. I ended up picking Coca-Cola because the big misconception is that, you know, when companies get big, they can't grow anymore. That is so far from the truth. And Coca-Cola has such an iconic brand, even more iconic than Pepsi in my eyes. I just went with Coca-Cola and I haven't been let down. They're, they're providing great growth in my portfolio. Um, so they raised their full year outlook. Now this is amazing. And of course, being a consumer staple company, it kind of makes sense. This is the last um, thing that people will cut due to inflation, right? They'll keep spending on their Coke products. And so they, they did raise their full year outlook, their earnings per share, they raise it to six to 7% growth versus the five to 6%. So very slight increase, but their revenue, they increased decent to a 14 to 15% growth from their previous 12 to 13% projection. Um, now, of course, all companies that are global companies like Microsoft and Coca-Cola are fighting foreign currency exchange issues because of the strong dollar. So how they are offsetting that is they're hiking prices of their products and offering more affordable options. So this is something that with Coca-Cola, it shows the power of their brand. They have great brand value and excellent repeat customers. So they have repeat customers. To me, this is almost like subscription um, based revenue because Coca-Cola can really depend on people being repeat customers of their products and that's exactly what we're seeing. Now they did grow their market share globally, they said, and their best product this quarter, uh, quarter was Coke Zero and they had a volume growth of 11%. Now their hydration, sports and coffee tea division grew by 5% and that includes their Powerade, Body or Armor and Costa Coffee, which I think is newer. Now the Body Armor, they're aiming to out uh, be the number one brand and knock out Pepsi's Gatorade. So we'll see if they can do that. And I think this is a very well-known product. Body Armor, I am seeing more and more everywhere. I buy this from Costco. Every time I go, a big pack of it because after I work out, this is my drink of choice. I like that it's low in sugar, has a lot of the electric light, electrolytes and rehydration um, uh, ingredients in it. And so I think they have great products. They still have plenty of room for growth. I did a video on them a while back. I uh, highly recommend uh, seeing that if you are curious about where their growth can be. So Coca-Cola, great company, solid company, should do well during a recession. So I'm very glad that I hold this company in my portfolio. Now 3M, 3M was a mix. They beat on earnings per share but missed on revenue. They expected their revenue to come in at $2.60. They actually came in at $2.69 and their expected revenue was 8.7 billion. They came in just shy of 8.6 billion. So 3M, the big negative is they did lower their full year guidance and this is the second time this year they've done that. So they uh, reduced their revenue to a negative three to negative three five percent growth from a negative 0.5 to a negative 0.25 percent prior that they projected. So kind of expecting another percentage or two of loss. Their sales are down four percent year over year, due mainly to the foreign currency issue. Now Coca-Cola and Microsoft were able to do well here, but 3M is having some issues, and that's mainly because 60 percent of their revenue is from outside of the US. So that is mainly why, which makes sense to me and not raising any red flags there. Their operating cash uh, flow is down 18% year over year and their free cash flow is down 16% year over year. Something I don't like to see as an investor. They did divest their food safety business and they're working on spinning off their healthcare business. Um, of course, 
3M has a lot of lawsuits and some big ones that are going on, and that's what everyone's eyes are on, and that's why the stock has gone down so much. And Johnson & Johnson was one where they are successful, at, uh, they are being successful at spinning off their part of their business that is heavy on the lawsuits. 3M is trying the same thing. We'll see if that works. But with 3M, I feel they do have good brand value, but nowhere near Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola is where you have repeat customers. 3M, I feel, there's a lot of products people will buy, but it's not products that they'll likely buy again. Meaning when I bought my couch, you know, I bought 3M floor protectors. I don't plan on buying those again. That would probably be my only purchase of them for a long term, uh, for a long time. So though when you do buy things, it's most likely, likely to be a 3M product, it's not really creating the repeat customers that Coca-Cola does. So they have strong brand value, not as strong or anywhere near as Coca-Cola, but they do have strong brand value, I feel. When you go to the store, you see a 3, 3M product, I think you're more likely to buy that. But as far as repeat purchases, it's not something that they can do like Coca-Cola can. Now their long-term debt has decreased from the end of last year, uh, December 31st, 2021, from uh, 16 billion to 13.85 billion, so that was a good sign. Overall, I'm overweight with 3M in my portfolio. Um, you know, it's definitely at a loss for me. I feel this company is uh, pretty uh, attractively valued right now. Uh, it has more upside potential, I think, than downside potential because I think a lot of the worries have been baked in. So I might add slowly to reduce my average and hopefully someday be in the green and be able to really cut this position. Um, so their earnings weren't, they were just average to me. Nothing was like super good or super bad. It just pretty much as expected. And so uh, I think that's a good thing for 3M that they didn't do anything you know, too bad. Um, but lowering their, their outlook was kind of the big negative. So let's move on to two companies I don't have in my portfolio, but think these will also set a huge tone in the stock market. One was Google, and this one was bad. They missed on both earnings and revenue. So they, ex they had an expected earnings per share of $1.25. Their actual earnings per share was $1.06. Their expected revenue was $70.58 billion, and their actual revenue came in at $69.09 billion. Now Google. The revenue slowed to 6% from 41% a year earlier due to the decline in online spending is what they said. And I slightly agree, but I slightly want to say, I wonder if Amazon's going to see that slow down like Google did, or at least the huge 41 to 6% decline. Um, they also had the weakest period of growth since 2013. Now, ad revenue is definitely gone down massively. Um, online spending, I guess I can give them partially that. Um, but it's the YouTube ad revenue that did slide 2% from one year ago down to 7.07 billion from the expected 7.21 billion and analysts expected an actual increase of 3% and it was down 2%. So YouTube, I've heard from other YouTubers that their ad revenue they're getting is uh, much lower than it used to be. And so this is a sign that companies aren't spending as much on marketing. Uh, so their, their cloud came in at a B at 6.9 revenue versus the 6.69 revenue. But think of that. Microsoft is over 20 billion with their cloud. They're just shy of 7 billion. What a big difference. Um, but I guess that's a good thing for Google. So overall, this is Something that I think where Google is showing some weakness that they're very dependent on ad revenue. Um, and it, you know, who knows how long this will last, but it should be, in my opinion, more short term than a long term issue. And I think Google eventually will turn around um, and be a very strong investment. So, as of now, though, who knows? The next year could be rocky for Google, so just be prepared. Last one is UPS. Oh, and let me just back up. Google is kind of a foretelling of maybe what we might see with Meta. So I'm very anxious for that because I hold Meta, it's down so much. But because of Google going down, uh, it might be a sign for Meta. And if Meta beats, then that will be kind of something to say, okay, what was the difference between Google and Facebook? So UPS. UPS uh, had a mix as well, like 3M. So they beat on earnings. So they came in at $2.99 versus the expected $2.84. 
their revenue was a miss. They came in at 24.16 billion versus the expected 24.3 billion. So they said the revenue was a miss due to its supply chain solutions division and the softening global demand of what, you know their business. So they're increasing shipping rates by 6.9% on December December 27th due to inflation to help you know make up ground from their increased expenses and they reaffirm their outlook which is good but they are expecting a lower volume this holiday season compared to last uh, so what I will say about UPS I think um, Amazon is coming for them and will keep chipping away at this business little by little and I would not be investing in UPS it's just I do think Amazon will take over as the top contender someday um, and that's just my opinion you'll have to let me know what you think so I think that UPS uh, it'll be inter interesting to see what Amazon reports and see if there's any differing uh, numbers um, and that might show us the strength of Amazon or is it a whole global issue and not just by company, right? So let me know what you thought of these earnings. Here they are all together. Microsoft beat on both earnings and revenue. Coca-Cola beat on both earnings and revenue. 3M beat on earnings but missed on revenue. Google missed on both earnings and revenue which I think was more of a shocker, and UPS did be on earnings but did miss on revenue. So overall, there's some big um, positives here. Microsoft and Coca-Cola are big companies. They're showing strength. 3M, I think everyone was expecting bad, and they came in mixed, so that I think is good. Google, I think, was the big upset of the day, and UPS, I think, is more um, expected and in line with maybe what people were thinking. So. Overall, there's more strength than weaknesses today, in my opinion, and that's why the market went up pretty massively. That's why my portfolio is improving so quick. And overall, this has been a great day, uh, and I just am happy with my investments. The only one that I want to cut is 3M someday. Uh, but let me know, do you hold any of these companies? What do you think of their earnings? Uh, does this cause you to change anything with your portfolio uh, with these companies? Uh, by selling or adding or doing nothing. For me, I would love to add more. Microsoft, they are trending up again though. Uh, 3M, I will just average down at a very slow rate. And Coca-Cola, I think they are pricey, but you're paying for that, that stability and quality. So that one would have to go down for me to add. So I don't plan on adding to Coca-Cola. I don't hold Google. I don't plan on holding Google. Um, I think they're just... Their weakness is they're too heavy on the advertisement side. Uh, and I already am in Meta, which we've seen how that's done for me. And then UPS, I already have Amazon. And I'm more bullish on Amazon than um, UPS. I'm not bullish on UPS. So those are my thoughts. Let me know what you think. Uh, this is a quick video I wanted to get up so you guys can see the earnings. Um, and I will try to post as often as I can this week with the other big earnings. So with that said, hope you guys have a great day. Be sure to subscribe and we'll see you next time on Mark Arnold's Finance.